Hey everyone, in today's video we are going to talk a little bit about geometry and more specifically I have some ideas and activities for teaching 2D and 3D shapes in kindergarten and first grade. I don't know about you but I love teaching shapes in the classroom. It's a nice little break from addition and subtraction and place value that I feel like we do all year long and because it's so tactile I feel like students really get it when it comes to shapes. So I'm excited to share. I have five little activities for you, a couple freebies that you can check out and let's just get started. If you are ready to start this video, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's dive in. Tip number one when introducing 2D and 3D shapes to your students is to have them start off by examining different shapes. Now this kind of of exploration is one that I really like to do with geometry because like I mentioned before it's pretty hands-on students can actually feel and see the shapes but you can also do this with some images as well so I have a couple ideas for exploration if you happen to have a bunch of hands-on manipulatives either for 2d or 3d shapes that is a great place for students to start now I did run into a problem in my past classrooms where I didn't have enough um, shapes for every single person to be able to have their own so I couldn't do this whole group but I would do this as like a discovery center so maybe during our centers time or during our math tubs time I would ask students to go explore the shapes and while they're there I use shapes like these ones right here on Amazon this one's for 2D shapes. I also had some 3D shapes as well but when starting with our 2D shapes I would have them feel the shapes and I would ask them to kind of sort them however they wanted. It would be an open sort and they could decide, you know, maybe they'd put circles and ovals over here. They might sort them by sides. They might sort them by size, depending on the sizes of the shapes. They could sort them however they wanted. Again, this was just an open exploration, but this can be a fun way for them to get some ideas and get familiar with the shapes before you explicitly teach about each one. Now, if you don't have hands-on manipulatives, don't worry at all. You could do something like this idea right here. Now, this is an example of concept attainment that I talked about in my teaching digraphs video. Here you can see a thumbs up and a thumbs down. But what you would do here is instead of having pictures like these, which are showing CH on one side, all the ones in the thumb up have a CH sound and the other ones don't. Instead, you would sort shapes by different things like maybe you would put shapes with three sides on the thumbs up and shapes that have zero or four or maybe five sides on the thumbs down. So this way students are looking at the different shapes and just getting an idea of hmm, how are these similar? How are they not similar? And again, just kind of exploring by looking at them. And another way to do some exploration is to use shape cards like these. Now I have these in my geometry 2D and 3D shapes unit that I have for first grade. And there's a bunch of them. They are 2D and 3D shapes. And what students can do is just take a look of them. As you can see, these are images of real world items. So I chose to use clip art, but you could also find um, real pictures, real photographs of these things as well. And have students start to identify what types of shapes they see. So with these cards, again, keeping it kind of open-ended, I would have them sort the cards. They might sort them by 2D and 3D shapes, or they might sort them by the actual shape that they are. So they might put circles in one and ovals in another and hexagons in another. I also like those shape cards because as students get more familiar with them, we end up playing um, Go Fish with those cards and they try to get a set of three of similar shapes. So there are some ideas for step one, but I really like kicking off your geometry unit with some exploration. All right, after your students have explored those shapes a little bit, tip number two is to go ahead and make a shape attribution anchor chart. Now I have seen tons of these anchor charts all over Pinterest and different educational blogs. Here are some examples of what I mean. In most of the anchor charts you are going to see if it is a 2D anchor chart, you will see the name of the shape, you will see an image of it, and then usually we talk about how many sides and how many corners each shape has. And if it is a 3D shape, it'll again have the name and an image, but it'll also talk about how many faces, edges, and vertices each shape has. Now there's probably one more column I would add to either of those charts, whether 2D or 3D shapes, and that would be a real life example of those shapes. 
Since I really like students to think about how this world is made up of all these shapes and identify them in our classrooms, in our neighborhoods, it would be good if we could have a real life example and even maybe print out a little photograph of that example and put it on the anchor chart. And two quick side notes about creating this anchor chart. I would only do about two to three shapes a day and I would complete that anchor chart with student input. So they've already explored these shapes. You might, they might have some examples that they can actually give you to help you complete this anchor chart that you will keep around your classroom throughout your geometry unit. All right, activity number three is to make sure you have students identify defining versus non-defining attributes. Now, if you've already made an anchor chart, students will know what the attributes of each individual shape are, and they can at least look at it for reference, but you wanna make sure you introduce some of those non-defining attributes as well. I like to do this with a simple sort. It looks like this right here. And basically there's just two headers, defining and non-defining. And I really explain to students that, you know, when we see a circle, a defining attribute is something that makes it a circle. So for example, a circle circle has to have zero sides and a sphere has to have zero edges. Some non-defining attributes are color, size, orientation, whether it's twisted or, you know, facing a different way than students might usually see it facing. And also things like, you know, is it polka dots or does it have stripes? Things like that. So for an activity like this one, I would simply give students those two headers and I would have them work with a partner using a bunch of cards like these. Now I have this for 2D and I also have some for 3D shapes as well. But again, you can see the triangle is purple. The trapezoid is small. Uh, the square has four vertices. They need to know which ones are defining attributes and make it that shape and which ones don't really matter. So after talking about it whole group, I would give students those headers and those cards with a partner and go have them sort. They usually catch on pretty quickly to that one, but if they're doing it with a partner, I can quickly hop around and kind of see who needs any reteaching with that idea. Activity number four is to have students compose and decompose different shapes. Now I love this type of activity because it is tactile and hands-on and students really get into it. So let me share some ideas for composing and decomposing shapes. First, I have these free shapes cards right here. These are composing shapes cards and they have them for pattern blocks. So students will use different pattern blocks to make different shapes. I threw that up on my blog, I think in 2014 or 2013, and I'll link that freebie down in the description for you to grab, but all you need are those cards and some pattern blocks. Another activity I love is 2D make a shape, and here you can see students have a little spinner. I have this one shown here with the actual shapes on it, and students would use a pencil and a paper clip to spin that spinner and have to make the shape. So sometimes I will put different straws, I'll put yarn, I will put popsicle sticks, Play-Doh, anything tactile and fun, and they have to go ahead and recreate that shape. And I also have a differentiated spinner instead of actually showing what the shape looks like. It's a spinner like this one right here, where it might say the shape or it might give some attributes. So four equal sides, it would have to make a square. This is just a little extension on that same type of activity. Another fun one using pattern blocks are these cards right here. And these you can actually see they are composing fun different shapes with their imagination. So they might use pattern blocks to make an airplane or a house or a crown. But the important thing is after they've created their, you know, creation, they have to fill out a page like this one where they share what they made with their pattern blocks. And also they fill out this tally chart showing how many of each pattern block they ended up using. And for decomposing shapes, I actually like to make a big piece of paper that looks like this. Here is the example for a square. And it is simply a black and white square, but I would absolutely laminate these and give students dry erase markers. And they are going to show the different ways they could decompose this square into other shapes. So as you can see, I put some examples. Can you turn this square into two triangles? What about two rectangles, three rectangles? four triangles and four squares. 
As they decompose each shape, they can simply erase it and then try the next way to decompose it. And it's a fun way for them to use those markers in that same shape over and over to see how they can turn it into so many different things. All right, an activity or tip number five is called 3D mystery bags. Now I'm not actually going to explain how to play this in this video right here. It is a pretty simple concept, but I actually made its own little short video right here for how to do it and you are going to put some 3D shapes in those brown paper bags and students will have to feel around and feel the attributes to see if they know what shape is inside the bag. So I think that's a very quick video. You can go ahead over and watch it if that is something you want to do. I even included a free recording sheet over in that video. So if you are doing 3D shapes, head over there after this. So there you have a bunch of different ideas for teaching all about shapes in a kindergarten or first grade classroom. Now I would love to know from you, which of these ideas are you going to try in your own classroom? Or do you have any other shape activities your students have loved? Drop them down in the comments below. If you've been around, you know I love to read the comments and kind of generate some ideas down there. And also when teachers ask questions, it gives me ideas for new videos that you may be looking for here on my channel. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video I upload. And just so you know, I am here every Thursday and Sunday morning. See you in the next one. Bye.